Stevens. You're from um, Rebel Bio, who's a uh, SynBio and Biotech Accelerator based in, in Cork, Ireland. Uh, I guess my first question is, we just heard David saying synthetic biology is the worst <laughs> name possible and that the guys who invented it should be, sh should be fired. What do you think of this name? Um, personally, uh, I'm kind of biased. Um, <laughs> We, we've, uh, since 2014, we started investing in, in synthetic biology via our uh, parent VC fund, SOS Ventures. So it's a $350 million US fund. Um, and uh, I mean, synthetic biology, in a broad sense, it's, it's applying engineering, the underlying principles of engineering into genetic engineering, where cells are, are circuits you manipulate. So I mean, if people aren't a fan of the name, uh, they might think of a better one. But in, in the interim, it's, it's, it's what we're working with. And it's a bit more precise than uh, just genetic engineering in the broad sense. That's good. And then, so talking about acceleration in, in biotech, it's, um, it's true that compared to tech, where you have an accelerator starting every week, also from like big, big corporates, it's, it's not really the case in biotech or less. And you're one of the like, most successful like, biotech accelerators. So. Like, why, why is that, and what makes you different compared to others, and why, yeah, just why is that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, throughout SOSV, um, regardless of, of, of the program, I mean, we have Hacks, Foodex, uh, we have in, Indie Bio as well. The format is always three months. And uh, what's different as well is our, under, our overarching management team, uh, so Sean O'Sullivan and Bill Yao, they're all successful entrepreneurs who have had exits in the past. Uh, so that really helps, um, you know, push. Uh, and accelerators can be viewed more of a, as a crucible rather than something that, you know, you need to put the entrepreneurs under the, the right selective pressure to make sure that they come out uh, successful and can close rounds, can generate early revenues as best possible, best as possible, and, uh, you know, keep keep pushing forward. And, and, and talking, I think one, one of the things that how you select the companies, like you take biotech companies but we have which have like earlier to act I mean, earlier market access possibilities so not necessarily therapeutics can you elaborate a bit more on that uh, I mean we, we've seen um, since 2016 last year we, we took on board helix works and uh, that's a very consumer facing platform I mean they can uh, synthesize DNA uh, within a turnaround time of approximately three days and ship it via Amazon as well as consumer DNA data storage with their system is MOS, Molecular Storage System. You can buy DNA on Amazon. You can buy DNA on Amazon. <laughs> yes, Hopefully we're working on drone delivery, that's the next step. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, I mean, we, we do look to explore uh, consumer biotech applications. We have one company this year, I believe there's chief scientist Ian Valentine McDermott's in the audience, hopefully, uh, but their company is Cell Free Technology. So it's a, a very consumer facing platform where you engineer the cell, to have the active ingredient, which is the extract, uh, so that could be like a GFP expressing cell. Uh, break down the cell, keep the GFP, and then as an active ingredient, you can sell uh, to consumers like bio artists, um, you know, within next day. And they already have interest from Microsoft to buy, a, you know, a, a sizable order. So it's it's very promising. And and why why consumer? I mean, biotech consumer products now and not like uh, five years ago. Why, why is the timing right now? I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 it's the, uh, the availability of the, uh, the onset of CRISPR, uh, you know, consumer, cons consumer biotech is really current now. I mean, unfortunately, well, it didn't exist five years ago, but now with the new technologies, it allows us to, to explore new opportunities as well. And of course, you know, the cost of sequencing and synthesis uh, you know, dropped dramatically, i.e. through the Carlson, uh, via the Carlson curve, of course, to give people a better understanding of uh, how quickly it's crashing. Plus, I mean, with uh, Illumina are uh, good, scary in a good way where you can sequence a full human genome and soon that'll be roughly about $100, I believe so, with some of the equipment they have these days. So it's, it's moving very rapidly. And that's why consumer is now and not five years ago. Okay. And I guess Holger had an had a interesting question about the ethic and like the impact and how, I mean, when you talk about consumers, like, like really general public and they have an apprehension of, on biotech, how do you like see that or see it through your the company you funded? Is there any like reticence from the, the market or from the global consumer to buy biotech products? Like what how do you um, I mean in since twenty fourteen um we, we took on a company, uh, well Bill Yao, our general partner, um who who's our manager and then runs uh, founded our program, uh, you know, got an application from two uh, guys in San Francisco who said, We wanna make 
cows. We want to make milk without cows. I was about to ask about cultured meat. Like we we um, we interviewed Mark uh, from um, from cultured meat, and mm. he was really enthusiastic about like it could hit the market soon, and you could like uh, decrease the price by a factor of ten pretty rapidly. I mean the production price, yeah. like. Did you found any cultured meat companies? Uh, w well, through Indie Bio, um, our, you know our sister accelerator in in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, we have Memphis Meats. Uh, there's Finless Foods. There's White Wave Foods, New Wave Foods. There's a lot of foods. <laughs> uh, so overall, throughout SOSV's uh, structure, yes, we are investing in, in, investing quite heavily in in, in the, the synthetic biology, uh, the biological applications of of, of, of uh, animal free foods. So. Uh, but we uh, obviously Perfect Day uh, was the first example of SOSV's interest in, in investing in one of those companies, and they're doing quite well. Great. And um, if we switch to kind of more like longer term view on on Synbio and like bringing Synbio to consumers, like do, do you think I mean biotech will be personal as like electronics is now like personal computing? Do you think? No, we'll have personal biotech in like 10, 20 years. I mean, it, it's it's already happening now. I mean, uh, you can pretty much go online and Google and whatever you need. You can kit out your uh, kit out a home DIY bio lab for roughly a thousand dollars now. So uh, <laughs> it's it's happening very quickly. I mean, you know, we'll be working towards the <laughs> the idea of Bioshock, where you can uh, you know. Uh, Rapidly, Great you know, <laughs> yeah. When well, you can rapidly alter your genetic code and give yourself superpowers, we're not at that stage yet. But um, I think within, you know, it, it's it's slowly changing. And I think an idea of cell-free as a platform uh, that that would be probably another big step towards making consumer biotech a lot more current. And it's it, you know, we're already investing in that today. And it's already, you know, they should be on the market for the next six months. And and staying on the personal biotech, like what you think it's happening. It's always really hard to project and see how big it could become. I mean, as for like personal computing, where initially computers were just used to like calculate uh, like ballistic trajectories, and nobody had any idea on like how it would be used. And now it's like seems so obvious. Mm. Like, what would be that application that would make biotech super obvious for for any consumer? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean, I, I I can't really speculate too much. Uh, it. it, it <laughs> We could move towards, uh, you know, moving towards the area of like, you know, moving in the open insulin project is an interesting example of people, you know, wanting to understand diabetes and wanting to tackle it, you know, with, uh, you know, shared resources, um, and moving from there, you know, we'll have to, we'll just have to see what what the future holds. Anyone producing his own insulin in his kitchen? Yeah. That would be good. That would be kind of ready use. I mean, we're already seeing. Uh, I mean, from the Venter, uh, J. Craig Venter, uh, the digital to biological conversion has already, a paper was already published recently. So, that's going to be a new frontier in itself. Being able to create printable vaccines, and, you know, open source them or uh, verify them via blockchain to make sure that they're um, to make sure they're as safe and as validated as possible. And instead of having to worry about a supply chain where you ship large quantities of vaccines and have to worry about storage and containment and refrigeration, you can just email them in a PDF, send them to your uh, local 3D printer in a hospital or a neighboring area and have it printed and ready to go. So I think that will be another area that's going to be really, really exciting for everyone. That's great. And are you, are you active in that space? Like in I hope so. <laughs> no, but you, Soon. Did you, did you have any, any startups active in, in uh, Not as of yet, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll be pushing New Frontier. But uh, again, going back, I'm not too big a fan. I'm a very big fan of cell-free technology, but their platform has already led to the creation of a new company that's doing, uh, uh, I think it's open diagnostics, and they're using cell-free technology as a platform for RNA-based uh, testing of viruses, uh, or sorry, paper-based RNA testing for plant viruses. So that's created, one, one company from our batch has already created a new company that's going to apply next year. So I was thinking that was just scary, scarily awesome, but scary. Okay, yeah. I guess, I mean, one thing that like, I'm really excited in, in, in personal Synbio is that when, once you make it a, a platform and you give access to, to anyone, the power of the technology, you can like, come up with way more powerful things. Yeah. A bit like with personal computing or with the internet, where at the end, when everyone contributes, Make yep. something amazing, and we'll see what what comes out. Yep. Do you have any question in the audience? Um, yeah, one here.
Hi. Um, I think in terms of raw number, we see a lot fewer biotech accelerators in Europe than we do in the US. So do you think this is perhaps a product of innovation, product of funding, a product of the more risk-averse nature of European biotech? Um, good question. Uh, I, well, I mean, we're based in, in, in Cork currently, and we have already interest to set up a second program abroad. Um, so we're looking, we're, we're scouting UK, London, Cambridge as well. And we have op we have opportunities there uh, towards you know in investors. It's still pretty nascent, I feel, that for the seed stage investors, specifically in Europe. Uh, you know, but we're happy to talk to any any investor, invite them to our demo day, uh, to meet the teams and get hands on. Um, you know, get hands on with the companies and get to know more about them. Uh, but I mean, you know, it's throughout SOSV's format anyway. I think it's it's a good model. Plus, we have the. In, uh, the, the investment mechanism behind it, where we do, you know, we, we help find the lead investor, but we will also help do follow on invest in, investment in the companies, provided we find the lead investor to work with us. So I think it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's changing. I think, uh, you know, with the growth of our program in, in Europe and, and the expansion, it's, the interest will, will steadily increase. And to follow up, maybe as, 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 as well as ventures both, on both sides of the Atlantic, like, Correct. do you see any, like, major, I don't know? Difference, behavior difference, I guess, was one part of the question um, between like the US, Europe, and the, and the bi really in the biotech companies you invest in. Um, I mean, I think capital is, of course, distributed, uh, you know, a bit unevenly in Europe, but, uh, you know, we, we're, look, you know, working to connect with as many interested investors as possible and, and help them, you know, work with scout opportunities. I mean, we, we had Merck visit this week and they were really keen on what, what companies, we were, uh, companies we were developing. So, um, yeah, sorry, hopefully I answered your question. Yep. Any more question? I'm here all day anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, then I, I have one more. Um, we, ha we have the, the, the CEO of Oxitech coming on stage later, um, and then like, engineering mosquitoes and, and kind of really huge potential. Um, to eradicate uh, malaria and, and many other diseases. What's your, what's your thought on that? Um, First of all, good work. <laughs> well done. Um, I mean, that, that's amazing. I mean, just to, to see um, just to see something like that develop already and, and help contribute to wiping out a number of, uh, a number of diseases, neglected tropical diseases, it's, it's really amazing just to see that work out. Um, I've nothing against that but other than, you know, stellar work. <laughs> Um, and maybe let's let's switch back to to Rebel Bio more. Like, um, how, what's what was your biggest success story so far? Uh, I would say uh, Perfect Day Foods. Um, just from the initial uh, from the initial group, uh, we also have Hyacinth, uh, who are developing endocannabinoids, uh, but they're they're manufactured through yeast, so they can engineer uh, ye uh, C uh, sorry THC analogs efficiently. Um, for, for treating epilepsy with minimal side effects, especially if you have to give doses to, you know, children or people with severe, severe epileptic... Uh, so synthesized THC synthesized in yeast well, in, in a lab? In yeast in a lab and, and just process upscale, but it's a low-yield, high-value product. Um, you know, and you sell it on Amazon as well? You can sell it on Amazon, <laughs> unless. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're not looking into that kind of application yet. I don't think we're on the black market. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, moving steadily forward, uh, you know, we're looking into different areas. Uh, we have uh, prospective research that doing crowdsourced drug discovery. So you can essentially get a kit from, from prospective research and it's a microbe miner. And you can go and scout for new antimicrobials in, in your backyard and send them back to the team. And they're already getting interest from companies like Novartis uh, for... for for um, you know, potential you know, new lead antimicrobials. Uh, we have a number of uh, great companies, especially on this batch. We have Valanx, uh, that's Michael Lukesh, the CEO. Uh, say hi, Mikey. Uh, <laughs> so they're, uh, in, they're using what's, what's called a click chemistry to, to make conjugate antibodies at a 50-fold cost reduction compared to uh, traditional sure. methods. So that's you know, really current. So that's, that's one of our latest batch. Yeah. And, uh, did you have all any exits so far? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, I, I would love if we did have one, but uh, I mean, uh, like I said, SOSV uh, accelerates at least, like, I think it's 100, 130 new companies every year and since 2010. So there are a lot of strong companies throughout our entire portfolio, but you know, we're hoping in the, within the next year or so that we can get an exit. Good. Be nice. Any more, we have time for one or two more questions.
There's one in the back there. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, you were talking about neglected tropical diseases and malaria and the way biotech could change that. Um, and I mean, for big players like Bayer, it might be profitable to, do just, to just do that at the side. But what about young teams? Like, if I just have an idea for that, it's not something people invest in and think they're going to get like 10 times the money out. How can, how can this be like, encouraged? Uh, <clears throat> so we, we already in, invested in, in a company in, in 2015 uh, called Glodiex. Uh, one of their co-founders is from, uh, their co-founder uh, Jens, Jensi and the CEO is Blaine. Uh, so Jensi is from Honduras and she has worked, uh, she created the first molecular biology lab in the University of Honduras to, to tackle such issues. Uh, and of course they were invest, invested uh, invested through SOSV and Rebel Bio uh, to, to tackle that. They should hopefully be in the market in Costa Rica by this August, and they're looking to target uh, dengue fever first. Uh, the concept was to create uh, an, an, uh, is, uh, isothermal amplification, so uh, PCR at room temperature, but to target, uh, to, to make the kit easy to use, so someone with minimal to no lab training could use it either as a homebrew test or a test in, in, the, in a, in a uh, you know, a relatively, uh, a relatively, you know, small laboratory. So uh, w we're already working, working quite adamantly on that, and they're they're doing doing pretty well. And they're they're an Irish company that are that are active in that area. And why did you invest in that? Did also the economics make sense? Uh, more often than not, that would be. Yeah, but it's it's about the social good as well, about being able to to use life sciences and biotechnology, synthetic biology, to to help address these issues. I guess that was the question, like, how do you generate return? And at, at the end, SOS Ventures, you have to return money to your limited, so. Yep. Um, so I guess also from the business point of view, it made, made sense to invest. It did, it did make sense, yeah. But what, what were the dynamics? Can you explain a bit uh, the economic dynamics? I mean, a, a company that's relatively small, that accesses a fairly large market, and, uh, and through, through Yensi, the co-founder, she worked in a lot of the majority of the, the Central American labs. Uh, so she has a, a large network. So if a company could, if companies such as Glodiex develops a fairly, a fairly large market, and uh, you know, a service to, to that area, that, you know that could be of interest to a larger company that can work to partner with them now, and you know percent, potentially an acquisition down the line when they get sufficient quantity of sales. So there's there's quite a few bits to the economics of it. Right. The one last question. We have 45 seconds left. Lightning round. <laughs> right. Otherwise, there's coffee in the back, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for so watching. Uh, but you, first, Steve. I'd like to thank Philip for organizing, uh, have me on board. I'd like to make him an honorary rebel. Yeah. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause, Steve. Thank you.